Uh, welcome to the 13th episode of the Dialogue Project with Akash Junagar, Dhairya Dedia and Aditya Bhatia. And today we have with us Aishwarya Thaminidi, who is an MBA candidate at the Yale School of Management. Uh, she has done her engineering in electronics and in communication from uh, VIT, which is Vellore Institute of Technology. Post that, she has worked uh, for five years across uh, multiple governance consulting uh, domains at organizations like Samagra and International Innovation Corps. A pleasure having you, Aishwarya. Uh, nice Thank to meet you. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you, you all as well. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Aishwarya. Uh, so uh, let's start with the discussion uh, by understanding your uh, background when you applied to the Yale School of Management in terms of three aspects, your uh, extracurricular activities, uh, your uh, work experience, and thirdly, volunteering activities, which you might have done. Sure, yeah. And like you correctly identified, these are three very important elements that dictate how successful you are at your business school application. So in terms of my work experience, um, like you mentioned, I have an educational background in engineering, but quickly I realized that that's not what I saw myself doing. I felt extremely passionate about, I guess, just being able to do something that helped make the lives of people in our country better. That's a need that I was constantly aware of because my parents were in the government healthcare system. And luckily for me, when I graduated in 2016, that's when governance consulting and social impact consulting was just picking up in India. So that put me at that very interesting vantage point that I wanted to be. But four years into it, I quickly realized that maybe I don't just want to restrict myself to the Indian government. For me, the definition of social impact started to expand over some over time. So I realized that even being part of the private sector, I could affect impact in a lot of different ways, which is when I decided I'll want to pivot from governance consulting into general consulting. And that's why, um, based on this work experience, I applied to the Yale School of Management for my MBA. But outside of my work experience, um, when it comes to my extracurriculars, I'd been dabbling in music for a long time. So during my career, I enrolled in the Shankar Mahadevan Academy uh, to do a course in Hindustani music, because given I'm South wow. Indian, I've mostly only been able to learn Carnatic in the past. So um, doing that was a great extracurricular for me to showcase. Outside of that, I've always loved painting in my free time. It's something that I continue to do to this day. So again, because it's been a long held ha hobby, that's something I could showcase mm -hmm. as well. On the volunteering front, for me, the burden to show that on my profile was a lot lesser because my entire career has been in social impact. So the reason mm -hmm. um, they ask you for your volunteer experiences is because the admissions committee wants to know that you are someone who actually cares about something beyond just your own skill development, mm -hmm. your own salary increment, et cetera. So um, outside of my career, the volunteer experience I showcased were twofold. One was... Um, an organization that I used to volunteer with back when I was in college. So it was an organization that helped to provide end of life support to cancer patients. And that's a cause that was very close to my heart because my own grandmother passed away from cancer. My dad himself is an oncologist. Okay. So I've grown up okay. seeing how painful that process can be. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, afterwards, back when I was working, I had also interned with a healthcare based nonprofit that provided support to bedridden patients. So these were the two volunteer experiences that I showcased. Okay. Okay. So that was a very inspiring profile in terms of uh, all the aspects in terms of volunteering activities and also the uh, social impact consulting, which you've done and you're truly passionate about. So uh, moving on to the uh, test score aspect of the application, uh, which tests does a uh, Yale School of Management uh, accept? Uh, which ones did you give and what were your scores on them? Sure, yeah. So the Yale School of Management, like most American business schools, accepts both the GRE and the GMAT. Um, I was initially of the opinion that perhaps they value the GMAT more than the GRE. But the more I've interacted with people at the school, I realized that that's not the case. People who have given both, okay. score, both tests have managed to get in. I, for one, had taken both the tests. I'd taken the GRE straight out of my undergrad, which was back when I saw myself doing a more grad school-oriented course. So I had a 331 in the GRE. Um, but when I was preparing to apply for business school, I gave the GMAT because firstly, like I said, I thought it may be more accepted. And secondly, I felt like maybe my ability to take tests has improved as I 
proceeded in consulting. So I took the GMAT sometime in 2019 and I got a 760 on that. So when you compare both those scores, I felt like my GMAT um, was more, it, it showed my holistic strengths in the verbal and the quant section and objectively it was a higher score. So I ended up submitting my GMAT score eventually. Okay, understood. Wow. So uh, one of the very frequently asked questions we have is about uh, test prep services or uh, admissions consulting or counseling services. So what was your personal preference at the time of your application? Yep, absolutely. I love that question. So I'll start with test prep. Um, I personally didn't take any official test prep series in terms of, um, you know, one in which you're taught how to do quant or taught how to do like sentence correction. Mm -hmm. Um, my resources were exclusively, um, I used the Manhattan study guides to refresh certain concepts, after which I focused exclusively on problem solving from the official guide and taking tests from this company called Experts Global. But those are about all the resources that I personally used. I didn't take a class. But that said, my caveat here is because I had an engineering background, I feel like my quants were already at a certain level of strength that they needed to be. I understand that that's not the case for some people. So if they feel like maybe they could use the extra support for the quantitative segment. I I feel like perhaps taking a test prep series may be a good idea for these people. As far as admissions consultants are concerned, my opinion there is a little bit different. Um, so like I was mentioning, my pre-MBA background is a little unconventional. You wouldn't traditionally associate it with the profile of someone who's going to go to an MBA. So in order to position my story to them, I knew clearly why I wanted to do an MBA, but I wasn't entirely sure how to put it across on paper. So I hired an admissions consultant called the Red Pen to help me out in this process. And I feel like their value proposition was immense because they got to know me um, not just in terms of my professional history or my extracurriculars, they actually got to know what I'm like as a person, um, okay. what values matter to me. And U.S. business school applications really value that sort of introspection. So by right, asking the right questions and helping me sequence my information the right way, I was able to put myself across as a more effective candidate. So on that front, my personal recommendation would be that if you can afford it, you should definitely hire an admissions consultant at least for one school, because the process of framing okay. your story in itself can be super valuable. Yeah, got it. Very honest. You shared everything very honestly with us, your whole uh, <laughs> counseling process. Uh, so moving on, Ashwarya, uh, what were the stages involved in the application process uh, for the Yale MBA? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like the first stage was deciding to go to business school itself. So starting to see the value of an MBA for my career itself took me a couple of years. So I feel like that's the first stage and it can be fairly diffuse based on when you start thinking about your uh, higher studies. But in terms of more concrete steps, once I decided to do an MBA and decided to go to the US for my MBA, the first step was to take the GMAT. And it's always better to get that out of the way early because that's one thing that you can control. That's one part of the process that you can repeat as many times as you can afford um, to get the score that you want. So starting early allows you the flexibility to take a second or a third attempt if you need to. So I did that in 2019 pretty early on. Um, the next stage after that, and this I recommend that candidates start um, early rather than late. So for example, I was targeting the round um, the round one deadlines, which were in, um, wow, uh, September or, or October of 2020. So this was the pandemic year. I started working on my story and my school selections pretty early on. I started in April of 2020. That's also when I hired my admissions consultant. So the first stage after hiring them was to chat with them, to present all the information about myself. So we could pick and choose the elements that we highlight in my story. So your story includes two parts. One is what you were doing in the past that led you to your career choices, what you've been able to learn over your career, et cetera. And the second part is why you want an MBA and how that ties to your short and your long-term goals. And for a lot of us, I mean, I was going into the MBA to move into consulting. I wasn't entirely sure what my long-term goal is, but then that's something that the admissions committee needs to know. So you have to put in a lot of thought into it at that point of time to give something that's not only convincing, but also seems aspirational and well tied back to your experience. So this process is something that people underestimate because, you know, you feel like you're talking about yourself. So how hard can it be? Well, it can be pretty hard because you're competing with a lot of people who are likely to be saying the same thing. So you have to come across as 
not only someone who is ambitious and knows what they want to do, but also someone who's very reflective, understands their own values and is able to tie that to what they want to do in the future. So getting all this out of the way took me almost two months. It was only by, let's say, early June to mid June that I had a good sense of what my story is going to be. And it was at this time that I started picking schools. So like I was mentioning earlier, schools may not differ from each other too much in terms of their values, but some schools, so for example, the Yale School of Management has a history of, um, I wouldn't say preferring, but they value students with past social impact experience who've shown a commitment to society. So I knew immediately that this is a good fit for me as opposed to some other school, which right. may voice those um, uh, those values to the same extent. So right. um, picking your schools, therefore, has to be a strategic effort. And my candid advice here is that when you look at schools based on their ranking, that's often a good indicator of how hard they're going to be to get into. So don't pick just the top five schools, for example, or don't just pick schools in, let's say, between the top 10 to top 15. Ideally, based on your capabilities and your GMAT score, have a good mixture of different schools so that you're not you're you're also aiming high while at the same time also being realistic about what you can potentially get into. Also throw in one safe school into the mixture because you don't want to go through the process uh, not having gotten into anything that can feel extremely disheartening. So picking the right portfolio of schools, diversifying your risk there is also extremely important. So that's something that I did in June. Following that was the process of drafting my essays for each school. Um, once I had the essay for one school set, that's when I picked up the next school. So like I was mentioning, because your story doesn't change from one school to another, when you move on from one school to the next, it takes you much lesser time to work on the second school than it did on the first school. So um, by, let's say, beginning of September, I had all my essays sorted. In the meantime, I was also working with my recommenders to make sure they turned in their LORs on time. I was also working on other sections of the application like um, you have these small box type questions where you have to summarize your work experience, etc. So to make sure that I'm doing a good job with that as well. I turned in all my applications in mid-September for the schools that I was applying to. I didn't do any round two applications. So they got to back to me with interview invites in October or some of them maybe even in early November. Um, yeah. uh, sorry, my apologies. They got back to me in October. I gave my interviews in October and early November and heard back on the final result in December. Okay. Wow. Uh, pretty long process. But yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, could you elaborate a bit more on the interview experience? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I had interviewed for four schools at that time. Um, my interview experience across them, they were similar in some respects and different in some respects. So for the Yale School of Management, for instance, my interview was conducted by a second year student. So she tended to be a lot more friendly. She was my age. So she was also a lot more easy to talk to. It was a 30 minute interview during which for the most you can predict the questions that you're going to be asked. There's usually one question around introducing yourself. There are a few behavioral questions where they'll ask you to tell them about a time when you showed a certain leadership quality. And then towards the end, you either conclude by um, asking them a few questions or maybe sharing a few things about yourself that may not have come up previously in the interview. So that's broadly how most business school interviews are laid out. Um, it helps to be prepared in advance. So even though you're introducing yourself um, using information that you already know, it helps to be extremely structured and strategic about the information that you're giving out. You have to make sure that... <clears throat> you show that you've been reflective about your past experiences. You also have to make sure that you throw in, in enough um, information about yourself from outside works. So even when you're telling them those leadership stories, make sure you're not winging it. Have a, few quest have a few stories in mind based on your work experience where you've displayed a lot of different leadership qualities so that when you have a question, you can automatically pick it up and tailor it to that specific question. And you're not really thinking on the spot, looking for information. Um, right. And usually American interviewers tend to be very informal. So it helps to reflect that level of informality. Another thing I'll say is when I interviewed for Cornell, my interview was conducted by a member of the admissions committee. They tend to be a slightly more tough. So to give you an example, they asked me a question about my short-term goals, which at that point was to work in a social impact consulting firm like Dalberg. Uh, so okay. they asked me a question around whether I'd interviewed, whether I'd interacted with anyone from Dalberg before, which was not what I was expecting. But it helps to also be prepared for um, 
I guess, deep dives into your short term and your long term goals as well. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, makes sense. Uh, so now that we've been through your application journey, uh, could you share some uh, some interview tips or some essay and SOP tips with our viewers? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So some of this I've already mentioned, but I feel like are probably worth highlighting again. One is to actually be yourself. So um, in an interview setting, they expect you to be able to speak about your values, about your experiences in a way that seems authentic. So if you want to seem authentic, it's almost always a good idea to actually talk about your own personal values without trying to seem like someone who they expect you to be. So um, th that's definitely one tip that um, uh, I would love to share. Another would be to not be afraid to share information about yourself. So sometimes there's some personal stories that we might hold back on sharing. Um, to the extent possible, to the extent that you're comfortable, try and put forward that version of yourself as well. Um, because that helps to add context to your, um, to your application. Outside of that, I would say when you're writing your essays, make sure to be structured. Don't try and tell them a lot of different things at the same time using the same essay. Ideally, just have one key message and maybe two or three supporting messages that you're trying to give. Um, and the same applies for your interview answers. If you're trying to make a point, just make that point before you move on to the next thing, because they're also evaluating you on how structured a communicator you are as well. Um, the third thing would be definitely start early in the process because essays often require a lot of iteration to till you hit upon um, the perfect piece that you want to put in your application. So starting early is always useful to give you that bandwidth to not only iterate, but also to get feedback from a lot of different people. Got perfect. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to add a question that is the program at Yale STEM designated? Yes. So you can choose to have a STEM designated MBA if you want to. In order to do that, you have to tell the academic office that you're interested in doing a STEM MBA. And then you are required to complete a certain number of credits in electives that have the STEM designation. It's very easy to do. Most of my friends who have wanted to stay back in the United States are doing STEM MBAs. And the good thing is because it's only a certain number of credits, you also continue to have the bandwidth to explore other uh, non-STEM electives as well. I personally didn't go for a STEM elective because like I was mentioning to you guys um, before this, I'm heading to Canada. So I didn't, uh, I fortunately didn't have the need to do that. But if you want to, most MBAs give you the opportunity to have a STEM designation. Okay. That's great. That's great. So coming to the end of our discussion, Eshwarya, so like how should an aspirant build his or her profile to get into this domain? Got it. And I think my advice there is going to be very different based on when you plan on applying and how much time you have before applying. Okay. If you have a couple of years before applying, my recommendation would be definitely work on building your profile within your work, within your place of work. So mm -hmm. here, I mean, they're looking for you to make an impact at your workplace. So don't just pick, pick projects that require you to do your routine functions. Uh, try and advocate for projects and roles that actually allow you to deliver results over and above what is expected of people in your role. That's how you can show excellence within your role. And I understand that for most young professionals, it's very difficult to, uh, to get into managerial roles by you're actually actively managing people. Mm -hmm. But it helps to take initiative in an informal sense as well. For example, in my past workplace, um, even though I was not a manager, I was able to bring the team together to do a problem solving session, to do a framework building session. Um, all of these are ways in which you can showcase that you are a good leader, despite not having the formal responsibility to be one. It also shows that you're a good team player, that you're someone who invests in your teammates. Um, even in an informal capacity, if you can say organize an office picnic, for instance, that's also a great way to show initiative and leadership. So um, building your work experience strategically is very important. If you can get formal promotions, that's honestly the best because it's a very concrete way to show that you've grown well in, within your career. Outside of your career, my advice would be definitely invest in your extracurricular activities. Do some, uh, do some volunteering if you feel like your experience, your job itself does not include a social impact element to it. Um, on the other hand, if you're very close to your, uh, your application, I would say don't really spend too much time on trying to make it seem like you're someone with, too, with extracurriculars or you're someone who's volunteered a lot because usually they manage to catch on to it if you're 
time duration is too short yeah. instead focus on giving your gmat and working on your story and presenting the best as essays because at that point those are the variables that in that are in your control so make sure that you control um what is likely to have the most impact at that point of time perfect okay so uh, thank you are some very uh, good and a uh, genuine tips you have given us throughout uh this discussion yeah thank you i hope it's useful yeah no no sure, sure. it will be very helpful definitely so like, just to conclude thank you ashwarya again for being a part of our discussion and sharing thank, your insights thank you so part. much thank you yeah we are hope many of the candidates would be inspired after watching this video and learning about your journey <laughs> thank you thank you so much Hey folks thank you for watching our video please like and share this video and subscribe to our youtube channel also guys please don't forget to mention your views in the comment section below and see you soon with our next video